So I'm out here, you guys, getting rocked by God, of course. I mean, what else would you expect, right? I'm out in the rain, and it's just refreshing, and I'm just pondering the life that I have in Him. And I'm just getting so rocked. <laughs> so I'm going to let you in on it. Because I could share all this just with me and my angels. But maybe there's somebody that needs to hear this. So I'm sending it out into the airwaves, to the bandwidths, and I'm sending it across the grid of God's network. So just thinking about my life and how God has worked things in me, this place of surrender, and like this place where you just don't care. You don't care what anybody thinks. You don't care if people judge you. It's just like, you know, you just gotta love them anyways. You know, I walked through this season in my life that put something inside of me that nobody could ever take away. I walked through a season in my life where because I'm a feeler, I don't know. I'm not going to say because I'm a feeler. Just, I'm a child of God. And he has his ways in our life. So I walked in one of his ways. This was a way he had for me to go. Some of you will never walk this way. Who am I to say? I mean, who am I to say? That's it. You don't understand. <laughs> when God just starts to... Whoo, download into you. I just think about a lot of people right now. They all think they know God. They write, oh, God's this and God's that. You know, how you been doing? This is the heart of God. This is, yeah, it's our measure that we know of Him. We can say that. This is how I see God. But you know what? Sometimes He just blows up every box. Every box. So we just learn to surrender all, all of our boxes everything that we think he is. I guess I just don't say that hard line, this is how God is. I don't do that. I try not to do that. If I do it, I'm momentarily delusioned. <laughs> you know, if you don't think you can be deceived, you are deceived already. Because Every day, we have distortions going on. I mean, somebody, somebody posts something on Facebook and they, it's a spoof. It's a, it's a, it's fake. And you didn't know it. Well, you were just deceived. I'm telling you. And so, I don't get caught up in this, I'm going to get deceived thing. I've been deceived. God still keeps me on track. I don't know how he does it. <sighs> So I don't even get stuck in that. I used to, oh boy, I spent a long time getting stuck because I got deceived big time. And boy, that broke something in me because it was like, oh, is this the worst? Is this the worst it can do? You know, I just trust God. Even, it's like, I have friends who've been in mental institutions. They're out of them now. <laughs> and even, there were times in my life where God took me through where I just thought I was losing my mind. And you know, you just get down the rock bottom of things and you just go, even if I lose my mind, God is with me, right? He's with me. Oh. <laughs> now she goes, or she went into prisons and you know, that was her testimony. I was once where you are. We all lose our mind, do stupid stuff. <laughs> so, oh, so I went through this season where, oh, I don't know, I lost track of time. Maybe 10 years, dark night of the soul, some people call it, whatever. It's kind of like 
Moses in the desert time or whew, Jesus 40 days uh, in the wilderness, whatever. I needed that. I needed that. Yeah, maybe if I was learning all the stuff I had now, I wouldn't have needed that, but whatever. I didn't have that. But I did have something. I'm telling you what, I wouldn't probably be able to build on what I'm building on now without that season. Because what God took me down to was there's not one thing, one thing that we have that he did not give us. There's not a desire to, to, to worship. There's not a, there's not a desire to seek him or to follow in his ways that he didn't give us. And I was stripped of all that. Stripped. And I didn't have a desire to get up in the morning and be with him. I didn't have a desire to read his word or pray. Sometimes I just felt like Job. But I'd sit in my pus and my wounds. And I would just cry out. Lord. And then I came down. To, <laughs> I would come down to this place where I'm like, God, I'm your mess. You know, for me, there was no going back. I had no bridge back into the world. You know, when you come out of such horrible dysfunction and, and insanity and woundedness, and God heals you. <laughs> he sets you free. You can't go back to that. You just can't. It's like you know a lover that loves your soul and is like, forget it. There's no going back. I don't care how a mess I am. He loves me. And so I would come to that place where, Lord, I'm your mess. I'm your mess. And during that 10 years, <laughs> whatever, I lost track of time. I don't know what it was. You know, you're just lost in it for days on days on days and years on years. And then I feel like you're never going to come out of it. But then you kind of start enjoying it because there's such a surrender. You know, you don't have to know everything. You don't have to be everything. And so I'm sharing all this with you guys because for some reason it's really bubbling up into me today. Whew. Some of you are going through this. So let me just encourage you that when you come out of it, you are like the rock within the rock. You know, you can't be moved. So he was putting something immovable in me. You know, he told me, Jody, I'm taking you through the fire. I'm going to shake everything that can be shaken. Everything in you is going to be tested. And you know what? <laughs> I laughed. I'm like, oh, you're, he said, you're going to feel like I've left you. And I'm like, I'm like in this lover relationship with Jesus. I've known Jesus since I'm 20, 21. Walk with Jesus in such intimacy. I mean, I never even thought it was abnormal to just love him and be loved by him and lavished in his presence and go into his bedchamber and be kissed and held in such deep, intimate places of my heart. And he says to me, <laughs> You're gonna feel like I've left you. I laughed. Oh Lord, I said, you'll never leave me or forsake me. Yeah. <laughs> what a foolish girl I was. Like a little immature lamb. Yeah. But he said, oh Jody, you will feel like I have left you. But I have not. I have not left you. And he said, <laughs> he said that to me. And so, oh, and then he gave me other visions and dreams of things. And I was like, oh God. I mean, I, I was like in the fire, the furnace with Daniel and the shit, man, she, yeah, I was in there with those guys. And Jesus was in there. And I'm thinking, oh no. This can't be good. <laughs> well, he started burning up all this crap inside me. The thought that feelings and emotions are what kept me in him. They weren't. When I got all that stripped away, 
I lived by his word. Every day he'd speak to me. I mean, I'm talking about the, the living word, not just the word you read in the Bible. Because I didn't have the desire to read the Bible, to tell you the truth. <sighs> but every morning he'd wake me up. And he'd say, Jody, the plans for your good, not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. <sighs> so and every day he would say that, sometimes a little differently. My plans for you are good, Jody. My plans for you are good. And I would just live on those words. Live on those words. And I had also a, a vision one time where I was in the courts of heaven. I was before the Lord and I, he was holding this baby in his arms. And he was speaking over this child and he said, You shall grow up and be great in my eyes. And then I knew it was me. I knew it was me. Sorry to be crying so much, but it's intense. <laughs> I knew it was me. And <laughs> so I'm like, Lord, I'm standing over here watching him hold me. And I said, Lord, what have I ever done that's great in your eyes? <laughs> uh, you know, he's such a loving father. Jesus is a loving father. I'm going to say that. Jesus is a loving father. Oh, he looked at me and he said, It is not what you have done. It is not what you have done. It is what I have spoken in my words. Do not return void. Oh, and he speaks with such words that command respect. It's like those words went through me. And I'm like, okay, I will grow up and be great in your eyes. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever you say, Lord. Gosh, I can argue with that. Okay? So that took me through this season, 10 years or whatever, of I, I would just meditate on that. I will grow up. I will grow up, and I will be great in his eyes. I will grow up. <sighs> and then when I came through this long, long season, <sighs> and I started to come into understanding grace and his love, it's like, oh my God, his love. I really think it's greater than anything that we could ever imagine. We try to explain his love or convey his love, we haven't got a clue. But his love. Whew. And then I understood. It wasn't anything I was going to do. You know, it took a long time to figure that out. I wasn't going to, you know, it wasn't how many people I'd raised from the dead. Or how many people's lives I was going to touch. Or how many great things I was going to do. It was just that I bear the greatness of God inside of me. <laughs> and I'm a willing vessel. And he even made me willing. We don't even have the will. It's like I had no will. I have no will of my own. He gives will. So you think you're great and you've got a, this some innately good thing inside of you. It is just a lie. It's deception. There is no good thing inside of us. Unless he puts it there, but he puts it there. And it's his goodness. It's his goodness. It's his goodness. You know the scripture. It's his goodness that leads us to repentance. Kindness. Oh. So, I don't know. I'm just sharing my heart. And so, when I began to realize that it's the greatness of God that lives inside of me, I'm going to grow up. And I'm going to get that I am great because I get, I'm great. Just innately great, you guys. Because I've been transformed into this being that comes from heaven and born with the Spirit of God living inside of me. That's great. You are great. You will grow up and be great in His eyes. You will mature into a full son, a mature son of God who is great in His eyes. <sighs> Sometimes I could just groan this out. It's like, oh, so deep. Your bowels want to vibrate with that sound here.
B wants to emanate it. You don't want to hold it back. I know this is a long video, but you know, this is not just for your everyday Joe out there that can live life and be happy with life just as it is. No, this is for someone that has been transformed and is being transformed and is coming into their sonship. Actually, this is for everybody, but they don't all know it. So, whatever. I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm just worshiping him with my body. I'm just giving him lately. Well, always, always, always his right to my body, to use my body, to possess my body. Because I'm just a penny in his pocket. <laughs> Really, I'm gold and silver in his pocket, but whatever. <clears throat> you know, you get these analogies that really are just a smidgen of what we are or what we're manifesting. It's like, no, I'm a son of God, but I'm just a penny in his pocket. I'm just, I'm just a gem in his heart. And he pulls me out when I'm willing to be broken with him. I'm willing to manifest his heart when I don't care because I don't care How, why could I care who cares what anybody thinks about us when you know what the God of all creation thinks about you who cares oh, just emanate his love let him possess your body sometimes he waits to possess you until you're like this fine wine ready to be poured poured out and it's okay he can do as he pleases he's God that's that's God I just don't question it well sometimes I do but <laughs> oh well so we question so we walk through hard crap whatever we all come down to this place and that's where I want to be I hope you guys want to be there too love you thank you